So I have a block that I can put on the floor. And as I have it to one side and I step up onto my block, I wanna point the toes of the other foot and tap the floor and just tell my brain, <laughs> relate to my body. If I'm looking ahead and not looking down because we have the opportunity, then I'm telling my brain, this is the floor and this is how far away I am from the floor. And this is good to just have that awareness building. It's not about taking the leg high now. It is about internal and external rotation. I wanna lift the knee and I want to turn the leg out. Hey, external rotation. And then turn the knee in internal rotation. And we're gonna do that again. And what I want you to notice is do you, if you have two chairs, do you have a tendency to count on one more than the other? Okay, can we just be centered and let the core muscles respond to the shift of the leg, step down? This makes the standing leg have a lot of work to do. We could have done this just from standing, but when we do it this way with, with the block, we really trick the standing leg into being a strong stabilizer. Step up. If you did nothing more than just stay here, keep your hips level, point the toes, keep them tapping, touching the floor, you're helping your brain know where you are in space without having to look down. This is how far away I am. And if what you can do is let go of the chair and put your hands at your hips, that's another way. But for this next exercise, I want us to bear down, lift the knee. External rotation, internal rotation. Again, we don't have to have the block. We could do this without the block. Regardless, if you have a chair on either side, notice your habit. Am I leaning into one hand more? Can I just barely need the chair? How far do I get in this range of movement? And not being in a hurry, moving with the breath. Excellent. So now we're gonna be slightly forward of the chair. Here we are. And we're gonna switch which leg is on the block. Here we go. I want to step up. And actually, okay, we have just enough time, okay? So I have stepped up onto the block. The chairs are slightly behind me. If you have one chair, it's just slightly behind you and you're gonna work with the outside leg, okay? Now, your knee is going to draw a figure eight sideways or an infinity sign. I wanna take my leg around and out and around and in and the chair is not in my way, around and out and around and in. And if the chair underneath your fingers uh, needs you to push or grip or hold, please keep yourself safe. But if you can let your fingertips just rest, and if you have two chairs, notice in yourself, do I lean to one side more and count on the chair? Do I lean to the other side? Or can I stay steady in the center? My center of gravity line stays the same while the stabilizers are being asked to work and step down and switch. Is everybody having fun recognizing how strong they are? Okay, step up. And how this lends itself to the myriad of ways we are asked to move that we just don't always take this straight line forward, right? Spend time here. If you want it to ignore everything else and just spend time here and notice, I can look up. I know where I am. I have a steady place. My toes are tapping the floor. And then I feel confident. I have that stability of knowing where I am. Here comes that infinity sign that relates to the infinite number of ways that you can use all your moving parts. <laughs> Get out in the world. Be a part of it. But pay attention to you. 
are my hands on these chairs giving me the even feedback? The leg comes, internal rotation, goes out to the side, external rotation. I am not favoring one part more. Can I make it even? And then step down. It wasn't all about the, the moving leg. It was mostly about the standing leg. 